Hey guys and welcome to my sixth episode of the HTML course. In this episode I will show you what's the difference of a relative and an absolute file path or URL. I'm gonna show you more details about the attributes of the image element IMG, uh, mainly the width and the height. And I'm going to show you how to make an image or background of the web page and introduce you to a new tag called pre. So let's get going. First, let's talk about the relative file path and the absolute file path. So, for example, if I'm going to link a relationship style sheet href style.css this is going to be a relative file path because index tree and style.css are right next to each other however in huge projects or it doesn't have to be huge in big projects the code is usually organized for example like this i'm going to make a new folder and that's going to be named styles styles and inside the styles I'm gonna make a new file which is gonna be named styles tree.css so yeah now we gotta get the absolute file path and we can do it by selecting the styles folder and forward slash and styles tree dot CSS. Visual Studio Code will help you a little bit with this. By the way, I want to change the title to be episode 6. And then I'm going to add an h1 heading of episode 6. Alright, there we go. So the difference between a relative and a absolute file path is that an absolute file is in a known location relative files are next to each other so you can just type in the file's name however if it's inside a folder you first gotta go to the folder by typing the folder and a forward slash and then go there just like I did over there all right now let's get the image I have a background photo over here of New York Central Park and I'm gonna make an image element the source of this image is going to be images uh, forward slash background photo alright and now you can see that the photo is enormous I'm gonna set the height to be uh, 100 pixels okay we can make it 300 and as you guys can see when I set the height or width the image will not lose its shape it will adjust accordingly so that's something really important to remember how about if I put both? Height is also going to be 300 pixels. Well, then the image loses its, uh, you know, it's going to be shrinked in, as you guys can see. If I make the width 200, it's going to look even more weird. So, if you're setting the width or height this way, use it. I mean use only one of them there we go alright another good practice is to use alt which means alternative text so let's say Central Park New York so for example if I misspelled this the absolute file path it wouldn't show me the photo, but it would at least show me the alternative text. Also, this text is used for screen readers and technologies like that. Alright then. There we go. 
Now, what if we want to make this image the background of my entire HTML document? Well, in that case, I can go ahead and remove this from here. And I'm going to go to the styles tree that CSS that we just linked in. And I'm going to select the body element. So the body element is going to be everything that we have or and see on the web page. So I'm going to set the background dash image colon. This is going to be a absolute file path. However, right now we are inside the styles folder. So if I type images forward slash uh, background dash image dot web p it's not gonna work. We are inside the styles folder. So we gotta get out of here. But uh, to get out of here we can type in two dots and a forward slash and then that will take us out of this folder and then actually it's not called image it's photo there we go now we got the photo on our page all right I'm gonna show you guys a little thing for example I am going to show it right here if your image is very small it's gonna repeat itself. This image is a large one, but if I zoom out enough, you can see that the image is repeating itself. So we don't want this to happen. So we gotta set another property, background dash repeat, no repeat. And this will no longer happen. There we go, we have our picture, but it's only showing up once. Then there's background dash position. If we set it, set it to center, it's gonna center it horizontally. So when we go inside to the file, it is going to be horizontally centered here as you guys can see. If we want our uh, background image to stay in place all the time, we can set background dash attachment attachment to be fixed. And just to make an example, I'm gonna make margin bottom 1000 pixels so margin is outside a uh, space outside outside of an element so basically right now this allows me to use the scroll bar i added 1000 pixels of empty space outside of the body element so yeah my page is tall now so yeah uh, and you can see I'm scrolling and the image is not moving. Now there's uh, one more that I would li like to show you guys. Uh, the image is not showing up correctly right now. It's only showing in the middle. So if we want it to sh show at the uh, correct size, we got to set another value. That value is going to be background dash size and that's going to be cover. There we go. Now the image is going to resize when I resize the window. And also over here it's always going to stay the same no matter how much I zoom in or zoom out or scroll it's gonna stay in place and it's gonna be the whole image so yeah that's pretty cool now uh, this is an example 
So I'm gonna comment this code out by using a forward slash asterisk and asterisk forward slash. There we go. And then go to the index file, image, source, absolute file, file path, images, background photo. And the height is gonna be 300 pixels. Alternative is gonna be New York Central Park. All right, there we have our image. Now we can set the image inside of some A tags, also known as anchor tags, and they are basically link elements. So href can be, for example, let's set it to take us to Google https colon forward slashes google dot com and then we can add some text we could also align it in the center but I'm gonna first move this inside of this so right now we have an anchor um, Oh, by the way, it's not working even. Okay, actually it is working. This page just always doesn't reload. Alright, so if I click this, it's gonna take me to Google. So let's try it out. I am here. Let's click it. And we are at Google. Let's get back. Let's make a small change. I'm gonna make the target attribute equal blank. What this what this does is that it's going to open a new tab in my browser. So right now if we go and click this picture. Okay, it didn't actually do the trick yet. There's something off. Okay. I accidentally placed this inside of the image element. It should be inside of the href. So there we go. Problem has been solved. All right. Now when we click it, it will open a new tab. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you guys the title attribute. Let's make a paragraph that says, hello, I am hover to see. And let's use a title, Tozu. So if I hover, it will say Tozu. There will be a tooltip. So that's the title attribute. This works on most of the HTML elements. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you guys uh, is the... So I also wanted to show you guys the uh, quotes and the double quotes. So as you guys can see, the title attribute is in between double quotes. Now we can also use single quotes. That will work as well. And for example, if we have to say Tozu and use double quotes, decoder, we gotta use single quotes on the outside and double quotes on the, on the inside. Uh, it hasn't updated. Yeah, now it says Tozu the coder. And this works the other way around. Let's use the title like that. And if we have to use single quotes on this word, we can do it by switching the quotes around. As you guys can see. All right. And then there is the pre-element. I wanted to show you that. 
So the pre element is a new element. We haven't discussed this yet. I'm gonna set this to have a class of uh, one, two, three, whatever. Actually, it can't be a number. Uh, my pre. There we go. And let's say that we're gonna type in hello, how are you? I am fine. I hope you are fine too. Now, in the HTML syntax, we have learned that HTML will ignore all empty spaces. So if we have a paragraph, test, and then I add a bunch of spaces and another test, over here they are gonna be shown side by side. But if we use a pre-element, I can add some spaces. As you guys can see, the two element is actually moving. So the regular HTML syntax, syntax means how the code works, uh, basically ignores spaces except for one space. But with the pre element, we can actually include the spaces if we want to. And yeah. All the normal uh, attributes are also a part of the pre uh, element. Anyways, you guys learned the absolute and relative file path URLs in this episode, a new element, uh, new stuff about images, how to make them your background. Uh, how to use an image as a link, the pre element, and what it does. So, yeah, I'm gonna continue on in the next episode with some new stuff, and I'm gonna see you there. And by the way, I forgot to mention you also learned about the double quotes and single quotes. Anyways, see you guys in the next one, and happy learning, everybody!